I don't believe it. I've just found a gold coin. And I've already had a hammered coin as well. What a day. You won't want to miss this video. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire and the thousand year old church site that I've been waiting on for ages and ages and ages. Um, I've got two fields. I've got this trackway here that's running right between the middle of both fields at the far end up that way behind me is the site of the old church which has been there since the 11th century. It was destroyed in around about 1559, 1560. There's some suggestion it carried on through until the middle of the 1600s potentially and uh, and yeah it could even go back to a an early Christian community who were called the Chaldees, who, uh, who appear in Scotland around about the 700s. So this site could be a Christian site going back 1300 years. So that would be pretty amazing. Um, some of the fields are uh, not in great condition. This potato field, which I've been really keen to get on, is pretty waterlogged, but we're going to see what we can do. Um, I've got high hopes, but... Uh, Maybe we'll end up with a good collection of early Christian tin cans, but we'll give it a go. Okay, uh, let's go and see. We're straight in with a target, and X marks the spot. Well, kind of. 84, 85, there is a bit of an irony tone there as well, though. But, what have we got? Well, there's iron in the hole. And that doesn't sound... Quite so good, a bit scattery. I think we might have aluminium, as predicted, on our first hole. It's there. No, maybe not. As you can see, I've got a glove on today. I think it's lead. It is. It's a bit of lead, but is it decorated? Or is it just a random piece of junky stuff? Nope, it looks like just a, a random little piece of lead. Funny shape though. So yeah, gloves on. Well, glove on for the first time this year. But yeah, a piece of lead gets us off and running could be any age, but hopefully better to come. Well, the farmer did warn me that the fields were pretty saturated, but I'm going to have to give this field up. Look at the state of my wellies. I physically cannot walk. I got stuck there. I couldn't actually get out. So I'm going to have to go into the field next door, which it's stubble. So it's been harvested, so there'll be some standing water in it, but hopefully it'll be a lot easier to walk on than this. And it does straddle the other side of the trackway that goes towards the old church. Well, I have to say, easier walking, certainly better on the wellies. Um, quite firm and dry at this part of the field at least. And I've, I've literally just jumped over the wall from the field next Door. there's the trackway with a the wall there and right here an ear blowing 84 which sounds kind of coin like to me kind of count coin like still in there I might be more that way Got you that time. Oh, I think we've got a coin. Right there, look. It's a penny. It's a penny. Let's get the gloves off. It's getting a bit warmer now, the sun's coming out a little bit more, but a cold day. What have we got? Looks pretty shiny. I think we could have a Victoria. We do have a Victoria, I think. I think that might be her there, is it? Um, right, I'll clean this up off camera, get back to you in a wee sec. 
It is as smooth as a baby's bum, but hopefully you can just make out the portrait of Queen Victoria. Young head, or bun head as it's called, looking to the left hand side. Very smooth, all of the letters have gone. However, on the back, thankfully, right at the bottom, we've got a date. And it looks like it's 1866. There's been plenty of targets and the vast majority so far have been lead. There's a lot of background iron as well. A few wee bits of tin foil and 5053. This could be another bit of tin foil. Well that doesn't sound good. 25 to 30. But there's another target, 55, 56, 57, 54, so that's maybe a hot rock, 30, well it's out, at least I didn't have to dig too far, let's see what the 30 is, that's it there, so it is indeed, oh, dropped it, it is indeed a great big bit of a uh, of charcoal, hot rock. Right, take that in my pocket, and then we'll have a wee look at, uh, at the other one, 5356. Somewhere in here. Maybe. Is it in that? What is in that? Oh, ho, oh, oh, look at that. He's got a hammered coin. That is a hammered coin. It's been just under the surface. That's the surface there. Look at that, sitting almost on its edge. Almost on its edge. It's a cut half or a broken penny. It looks like a pretty good cut to me. That is 100% a hammered coin. Well, not really going to get an imprint off it, but that is a cut half. A medieval hammered coin. You beauty. You beauty. Well, we've had hammered off this field already. We've had Edward I. We've had, well, not off this field, but off the fields around. Uh, we've had uh, Edward I, Edward III, Henry... And that looks like it might actually be a Henry. Oh, it's got a lovely portrait on it. Oh, it's a cracker. Look at that. You can just see one eye and, uh, and an ear and locks of hair. That is a beauty. What a shame it's cut in half. Well, it's a voided penny. Look, you can see the, you see the little gap between the lines. So it's a long cross, voided penny, and it could well be Henry the Third, but I don't know for sure. But I've had Henry the Third off of this, well, site, not this field, but this site before. And if it is Henry the Third, well, he was on the throne around about twelve fifty. Um, in fact, maybe even earlier than that, maybe like 1230. I think he was on the throne for quite a, a good amount of time. He, uh, he took the throne, I think he was only about uh, eight years of age, nine years of age. And he ruled, I think, until he was in his 70s. So maybe it was about 1200 that he became um, became king, 1210 or something like that. And he ruled till the 1270s. And his son was a disaster for Scotland because his son became Edward the First. Long shanks because of his long legs. Your shanks were your legs. And he was also known as the Hammer of the Scots. Edward the First. The Scottish Wars of Independence or the First Scottish Wars of Independence. So there you go. Well he was, uh, if it is Henry the Third, he was a Plantagenet. Um and they were kings of a large area of France, which was called Aquitaine. 
and uh, and they were also obviously the kings of England as well and conquested Wales later on. So there you are. So that's going to be probably around about 1250, 1270, something like that. What a beauty. Absolute cracker of a coin. Well, if you know, then comment below. Let me give you a wee close-up. If you recognise that coin, if you think it's Henry III, then let me know. This sounds a wee bit more substantial than tinfoil. 83, 84, but it's quite a big target. I think we'll take out a wee block this time. The ground's a wee bit firmer here with all these roots. Well, we might actually be out. We are out. We're out, no big tin can yet. What's that? It's a stone. What is that? What is that? Who got a dog? Oh, I've dropped it. That's heavier than I was expecting. We've got a dog. I don't believe it. It feels like it's made of lead. We've got a wee dog. I don't believe it. Well, I say wee dog, it's pretty massive. Look at the size of that. <laughs> that is a wee... It's like a wee uh, Scotty dog. Or a wee Sky Terrier. Let's give it a wee rub-a-dub. Well, it's got a loop on it. Don't know why it would have a loop on it. You're not going to wear that round your neck, are you? It weighs about three ounces. Well, there you go. We've got a wee dog. Oh, it's got writing on it. What does that say? Doesn't say foreign, does it? F O R E I G N? Foreign? Surely not. Surely you wouldn't stamp something foreign. Maybe it's a maker. Well, can any of you spot that? Let me just give it a wee final brush. Try and get that little bit of that little bit of mud out. See if that will help. Well, the sun's come out just at the right time. So, what do you think? It does look like it says foreign. Maybe it's a, a name of a family or manufacturer. But that is like a wee Sky Terrier. I wonder if it's Greyfriars Bobby, if any of you know that wee dog. Greyfriars Bobby um, lived in the 19th century. His owner in Edinburgh was a, a sort of night watchman come policeman. And uh, he had his dog for a couple of years, a little Sky Terrier. Looked very much like this. And uh, and he died after a couple of years. His name was Jock. Jock Grey. Old Jock, as he was known locally. And he died. And his little dog, Bobby, watched over his grave for 14 years in Greyfriars Kirkyard, next to the grass market in the old town of Edinburgh. And he became a little bit of a celebrity. People began to travel from all over the UK to see this little dog that would have his... Uh, have his lunch in a little cafe in the grass market every day and go back and sit on his dead owner's grave. And I think he died around about 18, 1875 or thereabouts. And Walt Disney visited Edinburgh in the 1960s, 50s or 60s, and he learned about Greyfriars Bobby and he actually made a movie about him. Uh, the Legend of Greyfriars Bobby, I think it was called. And Bobby goes on to... to win the freedom of the city of Edinburgh, which ironically also gave him the vote. At a time when women didn't have the vote, the dog had the vote. So there you go. Date-wise, well, it's probably going to be from that era, 1900. Um, maybe slightly earlier, maybe a little bit later, but I don't think it's probably any later than maybe 1930s or 40s, but let me know in the comments below. 
ear blower, I think we're in with a chance of a coin. Eighty, which could be a half penny. Oh, stone. Could be a half penny. Quite crumbly. Maybe just about there. We're out. Don't see anything yet. About there. No, there. It's there, is it? No, it's there. Well, we've got a clod, but I don't see anything yet. Oh, we've got a coin right under my thumb. Or a button. And a worm. Let's put you back in there, Mr. Worm. Look, we've actually got an imprint of a worm on the coin. That's a first. Well, there is... Sticky. Ah, Victoria. Again. Queen Victoria. So, eh... Uh, oh, was that me? It's had a wee nick recently. Um, it's a half penny. It's uh, Queen Victoria. It's a bun head, so it's a youngish head. Looking to the left. And on the reverse, I think we'll be struggling for a date on this one. Right there. Oh, we might get lucky. Oh well, we did. 18. Now is it 61 or 81? That's one or the other. So, not quite sure my eyesight's up to that. I think it's a 6. 1861, I think that is. So, half penny, Queen Victoria. So, uh, Queen Victoria's the one who's responsible for moving the royal family into Buckingham Palace. Uh, it was Buckingham House. Her uh, uncle? Uncle? I think it was her uncle. Um, or was it her father? Um, who uh, spent a lot of money renovating Buckingham House into a palace. Um, half a million pounds, if I remember right, back in the very early 1800s. And uh, Victoria moved the royal family officially to Buckingham Palace. She went on to have nine children who populated the European households, marrying into all the royal families. And, uh, yeah, there you go. 73 years and 200 odd days on the throne. That didn't, in a million years, sound like a coin. And I think the reason is that there's some iron or some, some sort of back chat in there. But look right there. And again, it's another good find because it looks like it's on its edge. That is a coin. Looks like a penny. Well, it's looking pretty crusty. But it's another coin, so I am not complaining. Oh, it's cold. I wish I'd brought another jumper with me. Today I'm going to have to put the gloves back on. Oh, it's Victoria again. Oh, it's not actually as bad as I thought. It's actually pretty good. Let's give it a wee rub on the back. We might get a date off this. It's 18-something. But the other letter looks looks obscured. So it's going to be before 1890 anyway. So 1837 to 1890, that kind of period. Uh, Victoria, I'm running out of things to say about Victoria. Um, oh, the Victoria Falls. Where are they? Zimbabwe? Um, they were discovered when Victoria was on the throne. Uh, well, I say discovered. Discovered by a European um, a man from Scotland. There you go. A Scot, a Scottish link yet again. David Livingston, and David Livingston was from a place called Blantyre near uh, Glasgow. Uh, he actually, I think, studied at the University of Glasgow. He was a missionary, but he was also an explorer, and he famously disappeared in uh, Africa trying to find the source of the Nile, and he discovered the falls, which he named. After Queen Victoria, Victoria Falls. And uh, that was about 1850 or thereabouts. And uh, he managed to convert a total of one person to Christianity in Africa. So he wasn't much use as a missionary. And I think that one person actually converted back to their original religion. But there we go. He tried. 
So, there you go. One more fact about Queen Victoria. Kind of. That was the Queen Victoria coin right there. And we might have another coin. 89. It's an absolute screamer. It's just a wee bit high. Normally the pennies come through 87, 88, not 89. But we'll soon find out. Still in there. Am I in the right place? Let's try a wee bit out of there. Right, pinpointer time. I might be in the wrong place slightly. What's that there? It's a stone. <laughs> no. Where is it? There it is. That is a coin. All day long, I think it was in the side wall. I think it was actually just under the surface. And I missed it. Gorgie Georgie, I think. So, George V, and date is 1921. No, it's a nine. It is. There's some sunshine just to help. 1929. Beautiful. So, George V, normally my most common coin, but it seems to be a, quite a lot of Victorias around here. And uh, he was on the throne 1910 to 36. He was the grandson of Queen Victoria, and uh, he oversaw some massive changes um, socially and uh, politically, not just in in the UK, but in Europe as well. Um, you had the rise of socialism, of communism, of Irish republicanism, um, and also the beginnings of uh, the Irish, uh, Irish, the Indian attempts to regain their sovereignty as well. Uh, Indian independence during George V's rule. Um, he also saw the Great War in 1914 to 1918, uh, which engulfed the whole of Europe and the United States got involved as well in 1917 too. So there you go, one penny. Right next to the lead is possibly another bit of lead. 72 this time. Well, at least it's not deep. We're out. We are out. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I think it's gold. It's a gold coin. It has to be a gold coin. Right next to the worm. Oh, come here. I've got it. It's a gold coin. It's a gold coin. 100% it's a gold coin. Oh, look at that worm. Little did it know how wealthy it was. I'm sorry, I'm going to steal it away from you. Come on. Oh, oh my god. It's a gold coin. Oh my god. Unbelievable. Oh. It's a gold coin. I think it's a half sovereign. Oh. And the sun has come out. believe it. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Yes. I had to uh, I had to turn it off for a second there just to compose myself. Oh, my hands are like blocks of ice. Absolutely freezing, but I can't operate the touch screen on the camera and the microphone without having gloves off. But this is going to warm me up. Oh my god. 
Look at that. It's a gold coin. It has got to be a gold coin. I, th I think it's going to be George V. It's definitely a head looking to the left hand side. The sun is out. It's the perfect moment to to take it off, to take the soil off. Let's zoom you in just a wee touch. Right, moment of truth. What have we got? That's absolutely gold. Come on, off you get mud. That is 100% a gold coin. Look at the colour of that. Oh my goodness, I'm going to put you back onto regular zoom setting because it looks a wee bit blurry. This is not when I want to be struggling to focus. There is a coin. Look at that glistening in the sun. It's a wee bit damaged on the edge up there. A few scratches, but on the whole, it's not bad at all, is it? This is my fifth gold coin. Fifth gold coin that I've ever found. It's upside down. There it is. George and the Dragon. Is that focused? I can't decide. 1914. Oh, I've dropped it. That, ladies and gents, is a gold coin. What an absolute cracker. What a cracker. It's every metal detectorist's dream. Gold. Doesn't matter how old it is. All that it matters is that it's gold. And that is a half sovereign. It's gorgeous George, George V. The most common coin that I ever find. And, eh... Uh, Sometimes I do get a little bit bored of George V when I find 8 or 10 or 15 of him in a day. Um, but today is an exception. A gold George V. You are most welcome any day. George V, by the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith and Emperor of India. Now, look at the colour of it. It's... I think 22 karat gold. I'm sure a half sovereign weighs about 4.1 or 4.4 grams. Certainly feels that kind of way. It's damaged at the top. It's had a bit of a nick. It's got a few scratches on it. Um, but on the whole, it is pretty good. And gold is gold. Uh, as I say, it's a high carat. I think it's 22 karat. It's, I think it's 96% gold or thereabouts. So it comes out the ground exactly as gold comes out the ground when you find it naturally bright and shiny and I'm so glad it's a sunny day just to show it off on the other side oh, upside down again is George and the dragon George slaying the dragon Saint George and you got a date in 1914 so just the outbreak of the great war the first world war and George V eh, George V Saint George I'm rambling um, saint George is the patron saint of, of England. Uh, he was adopted by England back in about 1350 as the head of the order of the, the Garter, which is the highest order of chivalry in England. Um, Edward III, if I remember rightly, created the order of the Garter. Uh, Garter. Uh, that's the equivalent of in Scotland we've got the Order of the Thistle. The Order of the Garters, that one that I always pronounce wrong. Oni soit mal quay pence. Um, so, I never get it right. Uh, 1914, unbelievable. Uh, St George, he uh, he was an early Christian. Um, he was from a place called Cappadocia, which is in modern day Turkey. And he was actually in the Roman, um, the Roman army. They believe he was an officer, possibly in the Praetorian Guard, which was the bodyguard of the the uh, the um, the emperor um, and emperor Diocletian ordered a purge of Christians, and old George was one of those Christians. 
He refused to give up his faith and belief in Christ and he was executed, beheaded, if I remember right. His head was later taken and placed in a church somewhere which was dedicated to him. And later on when Constantine, about 30 years later, this was about 300 AD, uh, and about 320, 330 is when uh, Constantine becomes Christian and uh, George later becomes a saint. Now he didn't slay a dragon back in the the 4th century. Um, The stories of dragon slaying didn't come around until about the 1200s, the 12, 1300s. And it was then adopted by England. Look at the sun shining on that. Unbelievable. That is every metal detectorist's dream. That deserves a close-up. Come on, sun, do your thing. Every metal detectorist dream, you always dream of finding treasures and things of beauty and value and gold is right up there. Typical that the sun goes away just at this exact moment, but uh, hopefully it'll be back in a wee second. Look at that. We've got another gold coin. I can't actually remember what that gold coin came in at. Was it 70? 72? This one's a 75. Does lightning strike twice? I doubt it. Stranger things have happened. Nope, there's something. Oh. oh! I think it could be a hammered coin. No way, is it? Oh, I think it. I think it might be. Oh, I think it is. I think it might be. Oh, I don't believe this. I cannot cope. See, this is another hammered coin. I don't believe it. Oh, I don't believe this. I do not believe it. Unbelievable! Oh, it's definitely a hammered coin. I can see the cross already. Be Scottish. It's not, it's English. It is an absolute beauty of a hammered coin. It's a... Oh, oh my God, I don't believe it. Look at the detail on that. Oh my God. God, oh, I don't believe it. I do not believe this. I'm going to have a heart attack. Right, I'm turning you off. I'll get back to you in a second. I'm going to go and cry now instead of lying down. Well, I'm utterly lost for words. Honestly, I could cry. I really could. That is an absolutely stunning silver penny. You can see the profile in the centre, the head facing straight at us. And it's one of the Edwards. E-D-V-A-R-D. I think it's probably Edward the First. And look at the reverse. It's just about as good as you could get. My God. Civi, C I V I, C I V I. And then in this quarter it would say T A S, which is robbed. But Civitas, City of. And then the mint mark. So I O N is actually L O N, it's Gothic typeface. And then D O N, London. Civitas, London, City of London. So this was minted in the Tower of London. And I'm going to guess that it's Edward I. It looks like it could be Edward I. The Hammer of the Scots. Um, The Longshanks from Braveheart. And this has probably been in the ground since 1272 to 1305. Um, Or 1307, I think it was, he died. 
unbelievable. I mean, who held that coin? The cut half was amazing. The gold is amazing too, but this is just unbelievable. I mean, come on, you come on an ancient church site, you just don't expect this. That is unbelievable. You saw it coming up. It's a thing of beauty. This is what a day. This is the best day's metal detecting I've had this year. Maybe even in the last five years. I really don't know. That is unreal. Absolutely unbelievable. That's a hammered silver right there. Right here. Sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. A ring pull. My heart can't cope. Honestly, I just... I'm just about ready to cry. I really am just about ready to cry. See it, I shouldn't have put that. There's a glint. There is a glint. It's going to be a see if this is a tombac button. I don't know. Ah. Oh. It's another one. It's another, it's another coin. That is another coin. It is. It's another coin. I'm not crying, honestly, it's just the wind. <laughs> I could be. It is! It's another Hammered Silver! I can't believe this! Oh my god. People are going to laugh at the, the reactions of this. It is another absolute cracker of a coin. It's another hammered silver coin. It's going to be another Edward. It's as good as the last one. It is. There's the head in the centre. Right, I'm going to need surgery at this, at this rate. I cannot even hold it. Alright, I'll get back to you in a second. This is unbelievable. I needed time to compose myself <laughs> off camera. I cannot hold the coin. It is silver hammered coin number three plus a gold coin that I've been detecting for four hours. Four and a half hours maybe. It's another coin of Edward. I can just make out A R D or A R. I can't remember. I think it's E D W A R, and then it goes to a letter T. But I can't remember what the legend reads. I'm making a complete mess of this video. I cannot hold the camera and I can't hold the coin properly. That is a hammered silver penny, and just like. The last one, it's rubbed in one corner, except this time it's the civvy part. C-I-V-I is rubbed, but we've got, well in fact it's not, it's exactly the same as the last one. C-I-V-I is there, it's the tor part. You oh, know, sorry, oh my god, I'm talking complete rubbish. It's civvy, it's tas that's missing, T-A-S, and the tor bit's at the end. It's Cantor, C-A-N-T-O-R, Canterbury. Um, 
It's Canterbury, Civitas Cantor, Canterbury. Um, and it's it's another Edward penny. It's another silver penny. I mean, are we talking a hoard here? We're talking about we're talking about ten feet from it. Uh, I've taken pictures. I've got GPS. I've actually not got a lot of time left to detect. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm just totally, utterly, uh, f- unbelievable. I'm blown away. Well, folks, the morning after the day before, if that makes any sense. Um, well, I've decided to split this video into a two-parter because I think we're already up to 40-odd minutes and otherwise because of the, the delights that are going to come later. Um, it was just going to end up like an hour and a half video. So um, what an emotional roller coaster that was. Um, quite something. Unbelievable. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed. There will be a part two, probably in a few days time. And uh, just, yeah, just what I thought, I think I say it in the video, that I think it's probably the greatest days detecting I've had in five years. But when you see part two, it's probably the greatest days detecting that I've ever had in my life. Um, and I've been detecting for 24 years. So uh, that tells you kind of what's about to come. So um, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up. And hopefully I'll see you all on the next video. And I can't wait for this typically Scottish weather to disappear so I can get back out on the medieval church field in Perthshire. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the next dig. Take care.